How did you celebrate your 16th birthday? A time for your coming of age, journey of becoming an independent adult. For all I know, you invited all your friends and family to share this special moment with you. Or were you mentally drained from the hours of extracurriculars on top of the tests your teachers had set on the same exact day? The date was March 8, 2022. On less than three hours of sleep, I woke up at 7 a.m. excited about my special day. I brushed my face, washed my teeth. Yes, you heard that correctly. I brushed my face, washed my teeth, and ride up to school in the nick of time. 7.35, world history. It was subtle, minimal work, and I just devoted the rest of the class studying for a test my next period. 8.20, calculus a class I dreaded the whole day, but since it was in the morning, I was just relieved to get it out of the way. Today was a chapter test, and normally, I don't ever feel confident I'm going to do well on any of these, but today was different. I had my birthday luck. The second my teacher passed out the daunting four pages, my mind completely shut down. Everything I'd studied the night before went out of my head, and I was left staring at a blank sheet of paper for the rest of the test. 10 o'clock, band. Almost felt like a getaway for me. My worries would be gone for the next 45 minutes as I indulged in preparation for my large group performance evaluation. But sometimes my eyes would shut for a little too long and I would awake in jitters whenever the two of us played their part. 10.45, Spanish. This class was great. I'd fully immersed myself in the language and culture and loved every aspect of it but today was my verbal assessment. When my teacher indicated it was my turn to start speaking, hola, me llamo Skunch, I spoke, and if you don't know anything about Spanish, I completely messed up the phrase, hello, my name is Skunch. Every other word, part of my Spanish script, became incomprehensible, and I stuttered to recite the simplest of phrases. Never had this happen for one class, but two. I couldn't recognize myself anymore. Time came around for the last period of my day, 1.45, biology. And as you might have guessed, yes, I did have a test. But unlike the others, I had a pretty good grasp on the content. When I took my test, however, the answers appeared in my head slightly longer than usual. I didn't think much of it and moved on with my life. Just glad to get everything done at this point. Soccer game. Expected to be there an hour after school ended and stay there until 9 p.m. After a miserable defeat, I arrived back home and began the cycle of studying for tests the next day. 4 a.m., I went to bed, ready to repeat the process the next day. Now, this didn't just happen on my birthday or the next day. This became an inescapable habit that had taken control of me for months on end. This became my body's circadian rhythm an internal process that regulates the sleep-wake states in your everyday cycle. This imaginary clock in our brain is typically affected by the lifestyle, stress, and patterns that go off the basis of the day's natural light and dark times. I had checked all of the boxes, my life was unbalanced, and I slowly started to see my persona deteriorate. All I could think about was school, never another thought in my mind. It was true. I had high expectations for myself and sacrificed sleep as a result. I didn't want to regret anything if I had complete control over it. So I would stay up on the weekdays and make up for it on the weekend. But unfortunately, our sleep doesn't exactly work like a bank. You can't expect to pay off this debt at a later time. So after many restless nights and forgotten days, my mind would constantly blink, just like it did during my Spanish verbal assessment and zone out like it did in my band class. Now, this speech isn't some sob story about how miserable my life was. In fact, every teenager in the audience has probably gone through an experience similar to this before. The first time you have lower than the recommended amount of sleep for your age, which typically falls between seven to nine hours, you'll feel exhausted. If this becomes a habit, however, you'll experience this drive or pressure for sleep which did in my case. This figure, for example, shows that the blue line is a healthy circadian rhythm, whereas the red line shows that your body is in desperate need of lowering that sleep drive or pressure. 
One way of artificially replenishing your sleep pressure is by taking naps scattered throughout the day, which in turn causes a greater urge for you to go back to sleep even when you're ready and to start a good day even after you wake up from your nap. You simply have not fulfilled your sleeping tank. Now, I keep mentioning sleep drive and sleep pressure, but what exactly is behind this? You guessed it, intracerebral adenosine, or for lack of better words, energy metabolism in our cells. We all know that energy drives the processes in our bodies Think about the last time that you skipped breakfast. Missing the most important meal of the day isn't exactly going to replenish your body's nutrients from the night before. Think about sleep in the same way. It flushes out the toxins that accumulate overnight and repairs the cells and tissues. For athletes, sleep is especially crucial for muscle growth and recovery. Now, back to circadian rhythms. One way to maximize the amount of energy that you have on a day-to-day -day basis is by creating this rhythm or routine that prevents you from burning out. Prioritize the necessities, such as eating, exercise, and of course, sleeping, and work everything on the basis of that. It's also important to take breaks, not naps, breaks. Go on a walk. Not only is it mentally refreshing, but it it also is physically refreshing. I know there are several overachievers in the audience, so if you find balance in your everyday life, you'll experience potential that's unheard of. Take my word for it. Remember, everything takes persistence. Till this day, I'm constantly trying to figure out and follow what I just said. Making the speech at 4 a.m. the night before doesn't exactly help my case, so take my word at your own advice. But I came to realize that sleep is often misconceived and overlooked. I didn't even realize sleep was as big of a deal as it was until I started doing more research about it. I just went off the basis of my own personal experience, which was less sleep equals less academic performance equals less athletic performance equals you putting more pressure on yourself and the cycle continues. And in the wise words of Matthew Walker, sleep is your superpower. Thank you.